Hi, everyone. I'm James Proton. I'd like to give a special thank you to our sponsors for the podcast. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. We have a, uh, a very special show here for episode number 42. Today, Nick and I are filming our Christmas special, and our guest, our very special guest, is none other than Santa Claus. Ho, 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 ho. Hello, everybody out there in the studio audience. <laughs> Santa, thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule. Oh, I know you're here doing some recon mm. and some some things, and and uh, and we, we're so we're just honored that you had a chance to sit down and with us and have a conversation. Oh well, it's a joy, Jamie, to reach out and, and reach as many people as I can before Christmas. That's 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 wonderful. So tell us what what how long. I don't even know where to start with questions. I, I, I sent some <laughs> around. I asked some folks, some youngsters, okay. and, you know, first, what would you like to ask Santa Claus? What kind of questions would you like to ask? But what i like, we'll get into that. But what I'd like to do is tell us a little bit about your, your life. What's it like on the North Pole? Well, the North Pole is a busy place. It's a magical place. Now, we call it the North Pole, but actually, actually it's um, Christmas town. Oh, there yeah, you because go. Because the North Pole is a huge continent, and we're just one little small town. Okay. No, it's Christmas town. Uh, we're settled in between a valley somewhere. We're not very easy to find. I mean, planes have flown over us, not seen us at all. I mean, imagine if you were in a plane flying over a town, and it was covered with snow. And there's snow in the roofs, and you look down, and it doesn't look like there's a town. It just, just looks look like, like snow. snow. So sure. planes fly over us all the time. Not too many commercial airliners fly over the North Pole or Christmas town. Very, very few. In fact, only the only people we get are maybe military planes. And okay. Some, some, some uh, commercial, some um, corporate planes. Okay. Maybe, maybe. But it's sure. not that. Often. And the satellites don't do too well at the North Pole because of the axis of the Earth. It's just sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's so, a good place to be. Yeah. And actually, well beneath the uh, Christmas town. There's an underground volcano. And so Christmas town is about as warm as a typical winter day in your town of Pittsburgh. You know, okay. We can walk around with a coat on or there'll be some snow on the ground. And the, uh, the steam from the underground volcano powers our electricity and it powers our toy making machinery. Okay. And, uh, it, yeah, it, it helps us to grow food and to sustain ourselves. That's, that's interesting. That yeah. is very interesting. What, um, tell us a little bit about, and, and I've always been curious about because I, Tell us a little bit about Mrs. Claus. Oh, Mrs. Claus is a wonderful woman. We met many, many years ago. Um, oh, I have to get into more like the history of, of myself, but um, I didn't, wasn't always Santa Claus. I wasn't always the toy maker from the North Pole that okay. you guys know. And so I started out very small. I was, um, at, at one point in my life, I lived a very long life. I go way back to the time of Jesus, but um, to make the story a little shorter, I uh, was known as Nicholas of Myra, okay. and I was a well-known and popular Catholic bishop. And, and that I, was in Greece, right? And that was in the town of Myra, or oh, actually Turkey. Turkey, Turkey, yeah, okay. actually Turkey. Okay. Um, I was known for secret giving, like, like to give something to people and not take credit for it and not okay. like make a big show about it. You need something here, I'm going to get it for you. Um, so eventually, uh, at that time, there was, you've, you've heard of the good King Wenceslas. Yes. Right? yes. Well, he was a wonderful ruler. He was a powerful ruler, and he loved his kingdom. He loved his people. Well, he loved children, and he loved toys. Okay. Now, I was a street vendor toy maker at that time, and I would make little toys and sell them on the street okay. corner to make extra money for myself. Sure. And, and the good King heard about that, and he asked me to come work for him in the kingdom. And he built me a nice workshop in the, in the castle, and we had helpers, which today are known as elves, but <laughs> he wanted toys for the children of the kingdom. Okay. Because he thought if children had toys, they would be happier. Sure. And happier children would grow up to be happier adults, and happier adults would be less likely to make war with one another. True. And, and plus, the good king liked to play with a few toys himself every <laughs> now and then. He, he enjoyed my taking. Well, Mrs. Claus... Her name was Martha. Okay. Was the chief party planner and head chef for the good king. Okay. And she would plan her part, well, the king's parties. You know, she would plan the parties for the royal family and for royal visitors. And um, 
she had all this wonderful food in the kitchen. Well, one night I was working late in the workshop and I was hungry. You know, I was starving. We had been working too late on a new toy idea we'd come up with. And so I wandered into the kitchen and I looked around and I saw these round things on a plate. And like, what is that, you know? And I tried one and they were delicious. Oh my goodness sakes, they were the most wonderful thing I've ever heard. Well, just as I'm getting ready to hear another bite, a big wood spoon comes down and smacks me right on the hand. <laughs> and a voice comes to me and this woman says, what do you think you're doing, you big hairy galumpus? You're, you're, you're stealing my, my food here. I made those for the king's party. You know, you can't take uh -huh. those. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I was just so hungry. What kind of cookies are these? And she said, well, I don't have a name for them yet. But they had little bits of this chocolate in them. Now, chocolate was very hard to get at that time mm -hmm. during the Middle Ages. Um, and she explained to me that they had to wait for the trade ships to come in to bring in the carob seeds, which had to be processed into chocolate. So it wasn't like you could go to a store and buy chocolate in those days. You had <laughs> right. to make it yourself from the seeds, which had to be imported. The sugar had to be imported. So each cookie, each chocolate chip cookie, cost about $500 in today's market because of wow. the, the extent you had to go through. But the yeah. king loved them, and the king's guests loved them. So actually, Mrs. Claus invented the chocolate chip cookie. Well, Martha and I, we got to be really close friends, and uh, she bandaged up my hand for me. And I would come <laughs> and visit her like every now and then, and she would make a nice little snack for me. And uh, one thing went to another, and we fell in love, and we got married. Wonderful. That, that's, what, a, what a wonderful love story. Mm -hmm. So, oh, Santa, that's... And, and, I, you know, you asked me, so, so I should ask you. Yeah. You know, you are known by many names in many different languages. Mm -hmm. You know, Santa Claus, yeah. Chris Kringle, St. Nicholas, and, mm -hmm. and so on. What, what do you prefer? What's your preference? Well, the names have evolved over the centuries. You know, it was St. Nicholas originally, mm -hmm. and then uh, some of the different languages translated into Sinterklaas, and Sinterklaas became Santa Claus. Um, so Santa Claus is kind of what I'm currently known as now, but in England I'm known as Father Christmas. Okay. And, and there's no problem with that. And in France I'm known as Pierre Noel, which I don't have a problem with that either. And uh, parts of Europe I'm still referred to as St. Nicholas. But the one thing that I don't like to be called, and, and a lot of parents do this, and I, you know, I, I can sympathize with them, they have a small child, like a toddler who's just learning how to speak. And they'll say, oh look Jimmy, there's Ho Ho. <laughs> hi, Ho Ho. Say hi to Ho Ho. And, uh, I can't stand being called Ho Ho. Please. Oh, not Ho Ho. Anything but Ho Ho. But I, I get it. I mean, the kid doesn't know that many words. Sure, I mean, they can barely sure. say mama or papa. So uh, they teach me, they teach the kid that my name is Ho Ho. And so okay. I accept it. I, 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 I accept it. But. Well, you, you, um, you look, you look pretty, pretty good in pretty good shape for somebody over a thousand years old. And, you know, you're, <laughs> So, how do you stay in shape? Do you have an exercise routine? You know, you gotta be you gotta be pretty healthy. Number one, to go and go around the entire world in one night, oh, yeah. but also to eat millions of chocolate chip cookies and milk. So how do you how do you how do you attribute your your overall good health? Well, I have to when I get up in the morning. The first thing I do is stretch. I do my stretches, my back stretches, my, my leg stretches. Uh, I make sure, like during the day, a few times a day, I like to take a nice walk okay. around the North Pole. I'll put on my coat and walk around the village. And uh, walking's my favorite exercise. I really like to walk. And then I might have to practice climbing upstairs because I have to climb ladders. I have to climb all sorts of things. So I, I can't let myself go too bad. I mean, one day of the year, sure, I eat a lot of cookies. But the rest <laughs> of the year, I, I try to eat healthy. I try to watch my blood sugar and cholesterol and blood pressure and all those good things and uh, I've been staying healthy so far. What's your favorite meal that Mrs. Claus makes for you? Oh well it has to be roast turkey with gravy and stuffing and uh, oh boy mashed potatoes, <laughs> uh, green bean casserole, uh, all those good things. Corn, bread, but it's, it's bad for me but uh, Every now and then, it, it, it doesn't Well, here hurt. in the U.S., tomorrow, tomorrow's the big day for that. Everybody, yeah. you know, all the kids, everybody will be having their their turkey and stuffing and all the trimmings, right, for Thanksgiving Day. So. Thanksgiving Day. We have Thanksgiving at the North Pole, too. Is we're, that right? We're very thankful for what God has given us, for how we've been blessed, and just the, the ability to be able to do this is a blessing. So we're very thankful at the North well, Pole. Well, you spread cheer all over the world to uh, to millions and millions and millions of people, Not not and not just children, mm -hmm. but, you know, 
grownups as well. Oh, yeah. You know, grownups as well. You're, and You're never too old to visit with Santa Claus. You know, I you're agree. You're never too old to get a picture with me or, you know, you're never too old to have that little childlike feeling inside, you know, right. just to, if it makes your day or if it makes you happy. If it, I, I think that's what Christmas does for us, right? That's what Christmas does for you. You're right, that's Jamie. That's what it does. You're that's right. what it does. And, you know, just sitting here. In, uh, at Chico Bacello, and everybody that has come through and walked by and, mm-hmm. and looked your way has just smiled. Yeah. You know, and it's oh, just, oh, the, you know, oh, no oh, matter oh. what is going on in, in their lives at that moment, yeah. they see you and they just smile. And that's, that, that has to make you happy yeah. to be able to do that for people. Mm-hmm. Well, their smile is the child inside them smiling. At yeah, me. there you and go. And that's what I recognize. So we talked a little bit about the North Pole. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, and a little bit about what it's like living there. But I'm going to stay on the, the subject of you. And, 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 and really, you are much, much healthier than, than I thought you would be. I thought oh, you yeah. were going to be an oh. old man that was going to need oh, help yeah. in the door, right? 300 pounds. So, <laughs> because, you know, in my, perhaps my, my favorite poem of all time, The Night Before Christmas, mm-hmm. Dr. Clement Moore described you, and I, with a broad face, a little round belly that shook when you laughed like a bowl full of jelly. Oh, oh, so, <laughs> <laughs> I knew How Cle- does that description make you feel? I knew Clement Moore very well, and he was poking a little fun at me. I mean, I'm <laughs> healthy, but I'm not skinny either. I mean, yeah, I do have a bowl full of jelly. Like, oh, 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 oh. It does shake, you know. <laughs> there and you it go. made him laugh, and it made me laugh. But we talked about the story many times, you know, before he published it, before he even wrote it. We sat down on that one Christmas Eve. And, uh, uh-huh. the, uh, the only thing about that story that's not true today is I no longer smoke a pipe. There I, you go. Yeah, I gave it up many years ago when I heard it was bad for my health. And, and the people, Mrs. Claus didn't like the smell of that s- smoke anyway. So okay. I, I gave that up. But they, they, they keep it in the story. They keep it in the sure, poem. Sure. But it's, it's no longer true. It's all part of the legend. Mm-hmm. And so let's, let's talk a little bit now about the, the reindeer, which is mm-hmm. probably the biggest thing that you know kids they you know they listen for the 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 hoofs on on the rooftop and all exactly 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 Mm -hmm. so you have eight reindeer and i can i i'm let me see i can i'm pretty sure i can name six of them dasher dancer prancer vixen comet cupid but i get i get kind of tripped up what are what are what are the the last two well the last two are known as donner and blitzen although originally donner was known as donder it was Donder and Blitzen, which I believe is a f- uh, German or Dutch um, mm-hmm. translation of Thunder and Lightning. Oh, there you Donner go. Donder and Blitzen, there you Thunder go. and Lightning, because they're like Thunder and Lightning coming out of the sky. They're fast, and they, they move fast, and they strike fast. That was just a little bit of a quiz there. Yeah, but, but many years ago, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but many years ago, there was a fellow named Gene Autry, mm-hmm. and he recorded a very famous song about one of my reindeer, Rudolph. And he starts a song, you know, Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen and Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitz. He changed Donder to Donner. Because it was a little oh, bit, okay. it was a little bit easier for him to sing, to pronounce, right. to being from the south, you know, Donder kind of, and, and very faintly. I mean, if you're like an audio expert, if you turn up, you, you might hear him say Donder, but it comes out Donner. Mm-hmm. Okay. But he and, and people have accepted that, and, and I'm <clears throat> fine with that. Donner's fine with that. He's we okay call, with that. We sure, call okay. him Donner. We call him Donder. Either or, but originally it derived from Thunder. Donder and Blitzen, Thunder and Lightning. Wonderful. That that is that is very cool. Mm-hmm. Do you have a favorite reindeer? Uh, I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> Do you have a favorite grandchild? No. Ah, uh, well, you're not no. allowed to. You're say not that. allowed to say that. Yeah. I, I have a I have a bushel basket of them, and I, I I cannot say that. Yeah. Well, they're all my favorites. I mean, they're all wonderful. They all have their their job to do, and they all have something special they have to accomplish. So. Well, how do how do the reindeer stay in shape and stay healthy? It went you know all year round to get ready for Christmas. Do they exercise? Do they mm-hmm. do they eat anything other than carrots? Well, well, Jamie, imagine that you were going to be in the Olympics. And you were going to be a runner in the Olympics. Uh-huh. Okay, and the Olympics is every four years. Well, you're not going to wait a month into the Olympics and then start training for it. Sure. People sure. that are in the Olympics that train for the Olympics train their whole lives. Okay. And it's no different from the reindeer. They train every day. They train their entire lives. I mean, exercise for the reindeer might be flying to Canada 
and then back. Okay. You know, that's a typical exercise morning oh, for them. Okay. They'll okay. fly to Canada and then back. They stay in good shape because that one night is like running a marathon, like being in the Olympics. You know, that <laughs> yeah. one night is your test. That's it's, a lot. You've it's got a to, lot. You've yeah. got to give it all on that one night. It's it's a lot of work. And they, they train the whole year through. And they like okay. carrots, but, you know, they also like apples. They okay. like raisins. And a real treat for reindeer that they really love is um, bananas. Really? So we get them uh, dried banana chips <clears throat> up at the North Pole. They like the uh, dried banana chips. But children like to live, leave out um, carrots for the reindeer, which okay. is fine. Sure. But uh, if you left out an apple, they would like that too. Raisins, they like that too. Uh, okay. They also like plain cereal without sugar. Reindeers don't care for sugar. But if you had like a, like a plain rice cereal or sure. a plain oat cereal that's uh -huh. no sugar involved, they, they like that too. Oh, cool. I did not yeah. know that. You're getting a good lesson here, Jamie. Yes, oh. I'm learning. I'm learning a lot about reindeer. And so the reindeer at the North Pole, I'm, I'm assuming they just roam free. They're not. Well, reindeer aren't the kind of an animal. That, I mean, we do have a barn for the reindeer. Okay. And, you know, they have stalls with their names on it, like, okay. like they would a horse. But reindeer are like a free range sort of animal. Mm -hmm. So they like to roam around some. They like to be out in open. They, they love the cold. They thrive on the cold. In fact, they, they, the cold in, invigorates them. You know, okay. it strengthens them. So, yeah, they'll wander around. But, you know, whenever we call them, they come back home right away. Was it, was it scary the night that you had to go and bring Rudolph in because it was so dark and cloudy that you, you couldn't see without him. Was that, was that scary for you, that trip? Well, that was the year we thought we were going to have to cancel Christmas. Oh, You know, it was, uh, oh, as I recall, that was many years ago. It was very scary. I didn't know Rudolph had that ability at first. Okay. You know, I was like... And I'm not sure how he got that ability. You know, it's sort of a mystery to me, but it, it, it could be a miracle. It could be many things. But um, Maybe. he was like that when he was a little, when he was a small reindeer calf. And uh, they tried to hide it. And, people, you know, his other friends made fun out of him. And he was sort of a loner. You know, he didn't um, play around with too, much, too many of the reindeers. But <clears throat> he had this amazing ability. And... Uh, I, I discovered it by accident. I mean, I was up late last one night, uh, right in the kitchen again, uh -huh. <laughs> looking for a snack, <laughs> and this bright light comes through the window. And I look out the window, and there was Rudolph with this amazing light on the end of his nose, looking around, and like, an idea came to me. Like, hey, wait a minute. This could work. There you and go. so I talked to Rudolph and asked him if he would be willing to leave the entire pack of reindeer, you know, the entire reindeer at the front with his huge spotlight of a nose, uh -huh. and that would cut through the fog. There we go. And, of course, you'll go down in history, which That's exactly the rest is right. history. The rest is history. Well, now Rudolph, he tends to get, like, a little bit of a swelled head, and uh, <laughs> he gets fan mail now, and like, oh, come on, Rudolph, you know, give it a break. There you go. Well, it's, it's understandable because, I mean, really saved Christmas. Yeah. So, so let's, let's talk a little bit about your helpers now. Now, you had, you had alluded to that, you know, when you first started mm -hmm. doing this centuries ago, yeah. you had helpers. Mm -hmm. When did you start bringing elves into to the North Pole to help you build the toys? Okay. Well, an elf can be anybody. It's not like a mythical creature. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think about the, the word elf, E-L-F. Okay, it's an acronym. It stands for Ever Loving Friend. Okay. So if Very you're, cool. If you're an elf, you're my ever loving friend. They're volunteers mostly. They're volunteers from all work, walks of life. Uh, some of them are retired. Some of them work for me part time. You know, they okay. come to the North Pole. There's no, um, like when you're making toys at the North Pole, you're not punching a clock. You don't have to produce so many toys per hour. There's no pressure, there's no stress. The elves love Christmas. They love being up in Christmas Town. They love being at the North Pole and the things that we have to do. They're, they're the people, and you know people yourself. There's people that leave their Christmas decorations up all year long. Oh, yes, know, they, yes. Or they might have a tree you sure. know, somewhere in the house all year long. Well, that's the kind of people the elves are. They, they love Christmas. So uh, some of them could be teachers even. You mm -hmm. know, they might, might, might be a teacher that takes off for the summer and might come up to the North Pole and try their hand at making a few toys. So and, you uh, make, you're making toys all year long. Mm -hmm. And you're, 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 so what is your favorite toy to, to make? Well, 
Hmm, there's all sorts of toys. I like the simple toys, the toys that most children start out with. A, a teddy bear, you know, okay. a doll, you know, a, a little train set or something. Yeah. Like the, the electronic toys, uh, the elves aren't like, we're not like really happy with that too much. I mean, they're kind of, kind of spoils a lot of fun. We like the old fashioned games and the old fashioned okay. kind of toys are, okay. are the best. Okay. And uh, a lot of, a lot of wooden toys. You have a, a lot you, of wooden you, toys. Uh, from my understanding, what I've always heard is that you have quite an extensive wood shop. Oh, absolutely. At the, at the North Pole. We have a state of the art wood shop. We have a metal shop. We have a tin shop. We have a plastic mold making, making devices, uh, die making equipment. We, we've got it all up there. It's just a, a regular manufacturing facility. You can, well, you got to crank out a lot of toys. Yeah. And we try to every year, we try to come up with new ideas for toys and let, try to come up with something a little different. Like, Rather than a plain doll or a plain teddy bear, they might, you know, invent a different kind of doll or, okay. you know, a different kind of stuffed animal, whatever, okay. something different like sure. kids would like. Sure, sure, sure. So you are probably the ultimate gift giver in history. Mm-hmm. You, uh, I don't know that there's anybody or throughout history that could, that could touch you. Yeah. And I'm sure that Mrs. Claus and perhaps some of the elves have, uh, have, have, have bestowed gifts upon you in your lifetime. So what what would be what is your favorite type of gift to receive? You know, my favorite gift of all is someone just saying thank you. Thank you means a lot to me. But the number one gift of all time I've ever received is uh, uh, our, our Savior Jesus Christ, the little baby that we celebrate at Christmas time. That's the number one gift that you can okay. ever. There's no gift that tops that, in my opinion. Sure, sure. Why? Well, it'd be tough to disagree with that. Yeah. So, the, all these this this legend of of you and all, all the the kind of the myths and things that are surrounding you. I have a couple of, couple of questions. Mm-hmm. Um, and going back to um, Clement Moore's poem. So, when did the whole coming down the chimney thing start? Well, uh, if you think about it, Jamie. I mean, I'm going to park the reindeer on the roof anyway. So the chimney's right there. Just slide down the chimney. I mean, I would have to climb down a ladder to, you know, go, go in the front door. <laughs> Most of the times the front door is locked. And uh, if that's a problem, well, I do have a little lock picking kit that I could get into okay. the front door if necessary. Okay. And there's, there's the elves also developed a magic key, too, along the way. But it's just the easiest thing to do. You get off the sleigh, you grab your toys, the chimney's right there. Down the chimney I go. Well, excellent, excellent. Get back up there, climb back up there. The reindeer are ready to go. We fly on to the next house. Have you ever gotten stuck? No. <laughs> close to it, close to it. Some of those chimneys can be really dirty. And I don't usually wear this outfit when I'm crawling down chimneys. I usually have like a more like work clothes, like a okay. working outfit that's, okay. you know. Okay. Those dirty chim- Mrs. Claus doesn't like when I bring back a dirty, a dirty outfit, and she's got to get it cleaned. Sure, sure. So was, was, was the Christmas tree your idea? The Christmas tree was not my idea. It was the idea of a, a man named Martin Luther uh, years ago that he was walking through the woods one night mm-hmm. and saw the, the, the stars shining through the evergreen trees and thought it was so beautiful that he brought it home. Uh, he cut one down, he brought it home, put it in his house, and he put candles on the tree okay. to light it up so his family could see what he was talking about. And that became associated with Christmas. That fad kind of grew from from one uh, country to another, and uh, eventually now it, it was celebrated all over the world. But they had to, when they lit the candles, they had to do it very short. And like, okay, here's what it looks like. All right, <laughs> blow them up. Because as you know, pine trees and fire don't mix very well. They don't well. mix so, very well. Yeah, yeah that's we've very had a, true. We've had a few trees just blow up right on us. But, there you go. Uh, Thomas Edison invented the electric light, and then he invented the, the Christmas light, too. And, and there's, there's a, a young couple, a young family, mm-hmm. uh, very near and dear to me, that has an ongoing debate about white lights versus multicolored rainbow type lights. Yeah. So they want to know what is your favorite? Well, um, you know. Um, and this is a very important question because there's, um, there's a lot riding on this, whoa. on your response. Whoa. So white lights or multicolored lights? Well, Jamie. It goes back to um, in my, on my own personal Christmas tree okay. in my own home. I really like incandescent lights, and they can be white. Or I mean, one year we might put up white lights. The next light night, uh, next year we might put up uh, colored lights. It doesn't matter. It's just 
how it makes you feel when you walk into the room. You know, when you see that tree all lit up so beautiful and looking good, uh, it can change from year to year. I mean, you, you don't really want the same looking tree every true, year. True, true. I, like I like to change things up from change year it to up. year. So, but I like the incandescent lights over the LED lights. I mean, the LED lights are a wonderful invention. Don't get me wrong there. But for my own personal Christmas tree, I like the warmth of the old-fashioned incandescent twinkle lights. There you go. I, I'm with you. I'm with you 100% on that one. Mm -hmm. And one other thing is hanging the, of socks, stockings on, on the mantle, the oh, chimney yeah. mantle. Okay. Well, that started way back many years ago when I was first starting out, when I was the, uh, the Bishop of Myra. There was a, a, a poor family. Uh, a man had three daughters, and he had no dowry so they can get married. And, and back then, there weren't many options for young women back then. Uh -huh. So uh, my heart went out to him. He, he cried to me one day and like, how am I going to do this? You know, my daughters are old enough to get married, but yet I have no dowry. And back in those days, if you didn't have a dowry, cash dowry to go with one of your daughters, they couldn't get married. Like no, no man wanted them, which is, is different today, thank God. But um, <laughs> so um, the family that had adopted me when I was mm -hmm. younger, they were quite wealthy, and they left me a nice small fortune. So, okay, I took some of the gold, okay. wrapped it up in a sack, and I was going to deliver it to this guy's house, but I didn't want him to know it was me doing it. So, um, okay, how am I going to do this? So, there's the <laughs> chimney. Aha, there's the chimney. And luckily, the fire had gone out for the night. So That's a good thing. Now, now back then, I had a better arm, and... With the strength of a baseball pitcher, I threw that sack of gold right up into the chimney. It came down and it landed right in a stocking because back in those days, children would wash their stockings and hang them up by the chimney for them to dry during the night. Sure. It landed right in a stocking. I did it a second time and a third time. Uh, it was a miracle. It was good aim. <laughs> it didn't happen. Well, I had good aim back then. I still have a little bit of good aim. I can still throw a ball. There you go. But, um, and when they woke up the next morning, uh, they felt so blessed that like, oh my goodness, Six, he had a, a, a gold dowry, uh, dowry for each of his daughters so they could get married and be become respectful. How wonderful is that? Oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> okay, now the big one, the one that Nick's been waiting to hear because, you know, Nick Nick does his very, very, very best to be, mm -hmm. to not be on the naughty list, oh, right? Yeah. So, no, your, your, your naughty and nice list is mm -hmm. famous and, you know, yeah. all the kids want to be on the nice list. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be on the naughty list. So how do you go about compiling that list with all of these millions and millions of children? All right, Chevy. I'm going to reveal something to you that I've never talked to you about before. But on this show, on this day, I'm going to let you know the truth. A scoop. Yeah. Okay. There are no children on the naughty list. Really? Most of the people on the naughty list are adults. <laughs> and, and the reason there's no children on the naughty list, there are children that do naughty things. You know, I see you out there. <laughs> but the saving grace is that... Nick? The, 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 yeah, Nick. I'm talking to you, Nick. <laughs> the, the saving grace is the child knows they've done something wrong. Well, okay, when that child does something naughty and they know they did it wrong and they apologize, mm -hmm. they ask for forgiveness, that takes them off of any sort of naughty list. That's as awesome. As long as they're willing to apologize and say, you know what, I did wrong, I'll try better next time, you're not on a naughty list. And you and, give them a chance because you check it twice at least, right? Yeah, and when you've done something naughty as a child, you know you've done it. There's no, nobody has to tell you, nobody has to see you. You know right here... You just did something wrong, and it's going to bother you, it's going to eat at you, right. and you're going to think about it, and the way to get through it is you apologize. You go to the person, you did something naughty, and, and you say, hey, I'm sorry. You know what? I did this. I'm sorry. That immediately puts you up on the nice list. There you go. There you go. Here comes some, oh, 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 here comes some oh, folks. Oh, okay. Somebody got on the internet and said I was here today. <laughs> Hi, guys. Oh, how you doing? We're blowing up on Facebook now. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's very funny because when you were talking and I waved, there was there were three adults that went by and they looked at you and they waved at you. Yeah, <laughs> and they oh, yeah. smiled and waved, ho, 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 which ho. is just, it, it just uh -huh. is amazing to me. I love that. You, you know, it's, it's a compliment that I can bring out the child in their heart. You yes, know? And, and that's absolutely. Absolutely. It, them as a little boy waving at me. It, yeah, all that's exactly it. what that was. Yeah, 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 he's just going back to being eight years old, you know, yeah. and it's it, that's that's amazing. So, obviously, 
Christmas, if, if you ask most people, they will say Christmas is their favorite holiday. Mm -hmm. And so other than Christmas, uh -huh. what is your favorite holiday other than Christmas? Well, you know, a holiday that we actually so oh, we celebrate Thanksgiving too, but okay. Thanksgiving is a part of Christmas. It's mm -hmm. part of the Christmas season. Well, uh, we enjoy the 4th of July up at the North Pole. I think it's wonderful when America declared its independence. I think it's wonderful that America celebrates that. And, and it's... There's Levi, your buddy, saying goodbye to you. Bye, Levi. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. He's in heaven. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. he is. <laughs> but we like to celebrate the 4th of July up at the North Pole as well. Because you know, there's fireworks, there's... Mm -hmm. Think about it. It's sort of like Christmas. Sure. It brings family together. We have cookouts. Yes. There's celebration. There's fireworks. There's music. The only thing is there's no presents. But you don't have to give a present because the family, the friendship... That's the present. That's the present in itself. Now, 4th of July leads up to Christmas in July, <laughs> which is pretty much the halfway point between, you know, uh, July and Christmas. That's, sure. It's six months until Christmas. So I get, get invited down to the United States, and they do a Christmas in July. And, uh, you know, I might wear, like, maybe a Hawaiian shirt or maybe a pair of red shorts and kind of get into the spirit of things and celebrate Christmas in July in Pittsburgh. Now, Christmas... I've seen a lot of pictures of you in a Hawaiian shirt at the beach. Oh. So I think that, uh, you know, you're, you're holding out on us because I think you spend a lot of time when when it's not Christmas season at the beach relaxing oh. a little bit. Well, Mrs. Claus loves the beach and I cannot <laughs> deny her a trip to the beach and after all the hustle and bustle and the fuss and worry we, we might put on some disguises and, and hit the beach for a couple of weeks before we go back but we work on Christmas all year long you know up in Christmas sure. town. We so work, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and uh, there's a lot of development going on and a lot of ideas production ideas talking about toys uh, mm -hmm. appearances where I'm going to appear that year. They, they work that out ahead of time, and uh, it's a lot of work. One, one, one more question. I, well, a couple more questions. Oh, yeah. What, if you could have any other job other than Santa Claus, what would be your dream job? Oh. Well, Jamie, you know, I've always admired trains. I like trains. I like the old steam engines. Okay. So if I wasn't Santa Claus, I would love to be a train engineer and pilot a nice old-fashioned steam engine through the countryside and take people for rides, you know, across here and there. There's a few old steam engines left in, well, the, in the United States few, and in sure. Europe, and you could actually take a ride on them, you know, as a tourist. And uh, yeah. that fascinates me, the, the mechanical workings of an engine, the, the, the steam engine, not so much diesel and the newer engines today, but the old-fashioned yeah. steam engines, they, they fascinate me. Oh, interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. And you talked about cookies, and yeah. you've been eating cookies for a long time, several centuries, as a matter of fact. So would you say that the chocolate chip is your favorite cookie? Well, I like the same kind of cookies that you like, and the same kind of cookies that you like, and what you like. And I always, a child always asks me, Santa, what kind of cookie is your favorite? What do you like the most? Well, you know what? I like the same kind of cookies that you like. Whatever you cookie your mom makes, your grandma makes, your aunt makes, whoever, whatever you like, that's what I like too. Whatever you leave out for me is my favorite. It becomes my favorite at that moment. I like them all. Wonderful. Emily, what's your favorite cookie? Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. Yeah. How about you, Nick? I don't like cookies. You know that. What? Yeah. <laughs> you don't like cookies? He's way too healthy for cookies. What happened to you, Nick? What, what, what? You don't even cookies <laughs> Where did at, you at Christmas wrong? time? You don't need a nice, fresh, home-baked cookie? Oh, Nick. Oh. Nick, Nick, Nick. As he gets older, he'll realize. You know, oh, yeah. I like to be healthy too, Nick, but, you know, sometimes you got you to gotta cheat a little bit and have a nice cookie, and yeah, it makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. See? <laughs> That's what I've been telling you all along. My goodness. One, one cookie's not going to you, put you out of health. Well, Christmas, Christmas in July, you mentioned that here just a, mi a minute ago. And, th uh -huh. and that's a very interesting concept because, you know, there are people who would love to have Christmas all year round. Oh, you know, like you said. And, and my, myself, and, myself so included. Where, where, oh, did, oh, where oh, did Christmas oh. in July actually come from? Christmas in July originated in the United States during the Second World War because there were a lot of soldiers fighting over in Europe and in the uh, Pacific. And... Uh, 
you know, families, they, they weren't going to be with their families at Christmas time. Sure. Okay. But the families wanted to send them a nice Christmas package, you know, a nice present, you know, something, you know, to let the boys fighting on the front lines know that we back at home care about you. Sure. You know, we love you. We worry about you. But the post office was like pretty much the only source back then. You didn't have FedEx. You didn't have right, a lot right. of the uh, shipping companies that you had today. The post office was it. And our post yeah. office had to communicate with post office from other countries and, and make something happen. So it was the post office that started the idea about having Christmas in July. They said, if you want to make sure that your son or your nephew or whatever fighting in the war over in Europe gets this package by Christmas, you have to have it ready for July. <laughs> really? You have, you have to buy it, you have to wrap it, and then you have to wrap it and, and you have to ship it because it's going to take that long to make it all the way over to the front lines, whether it was the Europe or in the Pacific. Right. And that's where the term Christmas in July originated. Now, there's a movie, oh, an old Hollywood movie called Christmas in July. Really? And, and there's, it's about a man who somehow uh, won a lottery, won, won some sort of money, and he went out buying people presents in Christmas, and then it turned out he really didn't win it. Like, it's so... <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. But, but that's another term other use Christmas in July. But the reason Christmas in July got started, and they used Christmas to promote this idea, like, hey, you know, uh, yeah. you know, Bing Crosby might be singing White Christmas in July, but to get you to work, you know, and, and go into action to get that Christmas present bought, wrapped, and shipped so that in the front lines they could receive it. So that's where Christmas in July originated. And over the years, it kind of took off, you know, as, as other things, you know, sure. people, there, there's people in the world. I mean, okay, you have friends that love football and they love hockey and sports. And you might see pictures in their house of like, you know, the Stanley Cup or the, the Super Bowl or things. You right. know. There's people that feel that same way about Christmas. You know, they keep Christmas in their hearts all year long. And if they can have a small decoration or something, even if it's just something in the corner, you know, sure. that reminds them of Christmas, they'll do that. There's a lot of Christmas fanatics out there. I mean, am I right? Sure. Am I absolutely. You're, yeah. you're absolutely right. There's, there's people who just, you, you feel better this yeah. time of year, right? It's just yeah. something about it. This Christmas spirit is a thing. Yeah. It's a real thing. And, and it shouldn't, people like that shouldn't be made fun out of or ridiculed or you're rushing, you're not rushing the holidays. You just have that Christmas in your heart. You know, and so Christmas in July is a big deal with them. And a lot okay. of people celebrate Christmas in July. You'll see Christmas movies on TV. You'll see, well, you know, and the stores have to get ready for Christmas. So yeah. you may see some ornaments and decorations coming in during the summer so that the stores have them ready for sale. So there's nothing wrong with Christmas in July. There's no, you know, I, it kind of makes me sad that when people say, well, you're rushing Christmas. It's not even Thanksgiving yet. Yeah, but Christmas is a season. You know, Christmas... It's a feeling. It's, it's a feeling. It's a feeling. It's a right. feeling. Exactly, right. Jamie. Yeah. Right. It's it's and and even beyond a season. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that if more of think about if more of us carried that Christmas spirit in our heart oh. all year round, oh, what yeah. a different world we would be living in. Right. Absolutely, Jamie. You know, you, it's you, uh, it, it's it, it's just really, you know, when you when you look at this place, I was so excited. That we spend a lot of time here, and when I came in a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. now and. Uh, when this airs, it'll be this. This will actually be posted mm -hmm. the Monday before Christmas. Okay. So, but we still we, tomorrow's yeah. Thanksgiving. Uh, tomorrow's but Thanksgiving. When, but... Two three weeks ago, when I first came in here and they were putting up the Christmas trees and all the lights and everything, mm -hmm. I immediately felt different. Mm -hmm. yes. I immediately felt different. I felt yes. lighter, and, and and I just smiled when I when I saw it. I was like, you know what? This is this is really awesome. It and I just... heard all the things about oh, you know, it's not even yeah. Thanksgiving, you know, oh, and all those yeah. things, but. But when you walked in here, you're like, yeah, this is this yeah. is this is good. Yeah, it makes you feel good. You can't explain it, but it makes you feel good again. You know, when I was flying above with the reindeer, you know, we were looking for a place to land. I could look down and see all the the trees and the lights and the decorations, and I thought, okay, I'm at the right place here. You know, <laughs> I love to go where Christmas is celebrated the most. So there you go. It, it's the uh, the I think the first. The first Friday and Saturday in December, mm -hmm. which would be, you know, that, well, actually next week, um, we have the Christmas celebration, the small town Christmas here in Cannonsburg. Wow. Um, it's a wonderful couple of days, and I'm sure you'll be here for that. And uh, I believe, I believe that you'll be a part of the parade when mm -hmm. it, you know, whenever, whenever it happens that weekend. Mm -hmm. So you, you get invited to a lot of things, and I'm sure that mm -hmm. you try to make every single one that you possibly can absolutely yeah the you know it, it's kind of funny they say well on 
Christmas Eve, you know, you, um, you don't see Santa Claus on Christmas Eve because I work so fast. Well, that's why, <laughs> that's why I do parades, and that's why I do public visits, and that's why I do the yeah. shopping malls and the stores, whatever. So I have a chance to visit with these kids because the Christmas Eve visit goes by so fast. You know, mm-hmm. I want to see what these kids like. You know, I want to see what they love and what they want and what their heart's desire is. And, uh, you know, I, lo- I love okay. getting a hug or just a smile. It really warms my heart. So I, I need to have these visits. It's not like I'm in show business and you know this is my public no no it's not like that at all Jamie you know I I want to be out there with my people I want to sure I want to see people I want to shake hands and give hugs and take pictures with you that's awesome give you memories you know? that is awesome and when you know when you're in a parade or when you're at at the mall and kids come and see you and they they, they tell you what they what they would love to have and what mm-hmm. their what their dreams are and that, that has to give you some really good ideas for new toys oh absolutely yeah they they give me ideas all the time you know, these kids come up with the, the amazing things, but, you know, it, it's some of the kids, they don't want toys. Um, they say, well, you know what, Santa, I've, I haven't been feeling too good lately. I, you know, my, my, I've been coughing a lot, and, you know, the doctors say there's, there's something wrong with me. It, could you heal me, Santa? And unfortunately, I don't have that power. I have the power to do many amazing things and, and have many things happen, but... Um, I don't have the power to heal people, but you know what? I can pray with you. Sure, and I'll absolutely. And I'll ask the parents, is it okay if I, I pray with them? Sure. I'll lay my hands on them and say, you know, dear Father in heaven, I pray for this child that they find health and they find happiness and, you know, heal them, Father. And, uh, you know. Uh, what a wonderful gift that is. Yeah. You know, if somebody oh, yeah. will do that for you, anybody, let alone Santa Claus, mm-hmm. that's, that's a wonderful gift to give anyone. Oh, yeah. Well, I keep Jesus very near and dear to my heart. Like I tell, I mean, I don't preach. I'm not a preacher. I don't preach the gospel or my beliefs onto anyone unless they bring it up first. If a, sure. child, if a child tells me, you know, Santa, Jesus, it's Jesus's birthday on Christmas. And I'll say, well, you know what? If there was never Jesus, there'd never be a Santa Claus or a Christmas or any of this. And I'll open up my coat and, and there on my coat, I have embroidered a little baby Jesus in the manger there. And I'll tell the child, you know, I keep Jesus very close to my heart. In the North Star. Yeah, in the yeah. North Star, too, the star that the wise men followed. So, sure. And, you know, uh, to, to, to quote a, a famous cartoon, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. Well, <laughs> you're absolutely <laughs> right. And, you know, it was, it was the three wise men who brought gifts to Jesus in the manger. And, yes. and so, you know, Christmas has always been a faith-based holiday. Mm-hmm. There's that connection be, you know, to, to Jesus has always been there. And regardless of what your, what your religious beliefs are, mm-hmm. you know, that connection to Christmas yeah. is there in, in just about any religion. Oh, absolutely. They, they, they try to make it like a non-sectarian holiday, and you can call it that on the calendar, and you can call it that in government, but in people's hearts, you know, they, they know what it's all about. Sure. Yeah, yeah and I, I think there's very little separation. That, you know, when you have to keep faith. If you don't have faith, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you have hope? Yeah. Right. You can't have one without the other. And if you want, if you hope for a better tomorrow, a better mm-hmm. day tomorrow, a better year next year, yeah. you have to hold on to that faith. You have to carry it in your heart. Yeah. Well, you know, the one thing about Christmas, Jamie, that I've noticed now, if I'm working in a mall or a store or a shopping center, I'll have all kinds of different people come up to me and they'll want to visit with Santa Claus. I've had Muslim people. I've had people from other countries. Sure. And they just enjoy the holiday. You know, they may not believe in Christmas and the way I believe in Christmas, but you know what? You're welcome. You know, you're welcome to come up and get a picture with me. Let's get a nice picture. They enjoy the holiday. And uh, one time I can remember I I said uh, to somebody, uh, a little boy, I said, Merry Christmas. And he looked back at me and said, I'm Jewish. (laughs) So I said, well, happy Hanukkah. <laughs> what do you want for Hanukkah? I have lots of friends that spin, you know, the, that spin the dreidel and light the menorah. So that's not a problem at all. You know, Christmas right. is for everyone. Let's all right. celebrate it. That, it. That's exactly right. It's, it's, it, it's, it universally brings mm-hmm. all of us together. Oh, absolutely. Regardless of where you look, where you, what you believe, it brings all of us together. Mm-hmm. I'm amazed at the people from other countries that visit America and they see a Christmas child or whatever, and they are so fascinated by it and they are so drawn to it. And, uh, I can remember a a person, an adult, came to see me years ago when I was one of the the, uh, department stores. Uh And they had just became an American citizen. Okay. 
And it's like, oh, you know, we just became, well, we want to do something American. So they wanted to visit with Santa Claus and get a picture with Santa Claus. So God, come on, you know, I'm here forever. <laughs> You're never too old to get a picture with Santa Claus or to visit with Santa Claus. So I came, come on, and she sat on my lap. She was an adult woman, and her husband sat with me too, and we posed for a nice picture. And at the time, they processed the picture at the store, and she's looking at it, and she had a tear in her eye. And she said, you know, the country I came from, we would be put to death for doing Ooh. something like this. Wow. And I said, well, God bless you and God bless America. Welcome to this country. You don't ever have to worry about that ever again. Now, that's very true. That is yeah. very true. That's not, that's not what we're about here. And, you know, I think that this has been, this has been a, a wonderful conversation, and, and I, I, we're so grateful for you, uh, for you to stop by. And thank oh. you for this. I, I, you know, we didn't get a chance to talk about these yet, and mm -hmm. you gave me this button, and, and I'm going to give it to one of my grandsons. Uh -huh. And uh, tell us a little bit about this button that you hand out and, and what it says on there, because I think this button and its message is one of the most powerful things that I, I think you could possibly ever give a child. All righty. Well, the button says... Santa Claus believes in me. And now I know there's a lot of children out there that are kind of on the bubble. You know, do you believe in Santa Claus? Do you not believe in Santa Claus? And so a kid at school might say, you know, do you still believe in Santa Claus? Well, now you can say, well, Santa Claus believes in me. <laughs> there you go. There's the answer to that there question. You go. But it also means, means that I, I believe in you. I believe that you're going to do great things in your life. I believe that you are a shining star in this world, and you're going to do amazing things and wonderful things. And so when it says Santa Claus believes in me, I believe in you. You can do it. You're amazing. You are gifted. You are talented. And, and that's what that button is supposed to remind them of. And, and that, is, that is just fantastic because oh, 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 oh. children need that. Oh, right, yeah. and and obviously any any young person that is watching this knows that they they have to believe in you because you're right here and you're you you've you've so graciously come and sat down and talked to us. And even though you know it, it you you're very very busy and you have a lot going on. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, hey, come here, sweetie. Come on over and say hello. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Reagan. Reagan, you've gotten so much bigger than when I saw you last year. Oh my goodness sakes, what a little lady you've become. Oh, look at your fancy boots you have on and you were in a pretty outfit. Oh my goodness sakes, look at that beautiful smile you have. <laughs> now, Reagan, was there anything special that you wanted for Christmas? Uh, anything special? What do you want for Christmas? Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, oh, well, here I am, there sweetie. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. Now, I have one last message for the boys and girls. Also. Okay. All right. Now, boys and girls, make sure that you go to bed early on Christmas Eve because I bring the presents when you're asleep. And when you wake up the next morning, you're going to see all kind of nice things under your tree. You're going to have a wonderful Christmas. Merry Christmas from me, from Santa Claus. Ho, 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 ho. And we'll be seeing you soon. Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 Thank you, Santa. Ho, 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 and give our best to Mrs. Claus, ho, 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 and we'll see you soon.